Hello, uh, today we're going to look at text fields again, kind of expanding our knowledge on how to use them. Uh, we're going to do this using the UI text field delegate, which is basically a protocol that will allow our view controller to receive uh, different messages when uh, different actions happen to that uh, text view. So let's lay out our app. Uh, it's going to be fairly simple, just going to have a label and a text field. Then we'll add our text field right under it. Make it a little bit larger. And we'll just uh, add the missing constraints and check how it looks real quick. Alright, so that's what it's going to look like when we uh, run the simulator. Looks good. Uh, now let's add, let's go back to the, here's our view controller. So we want to add the outlet so that this is actually connected to the view controller. Uh, just give it a, a name, we'll call it M text field. Okay. Now since we want to add a protocol, this to this particular uh, class, our class is a view controller and it inherits from UI view controller, this being the super class. We just add a comma and type in UI text field delegate. And now we're saying that this class uh, conforms or should conform to the UI text field delegate. And so that's going to expose uh, different methods within the UI text field delegate. Uh, we'll go and set a property for our existing text field, the M text field. So we'll say M text field dot delegate. And we're just going to say that's going to, we're going to say it's equal to ourself basically and what's that's doing is basically when uh, the text the M text field gets different messages it's gonna send them to the appropriate methods within ourself which we're gonna set up right now so to look at one of them if we type in text field we'll get all the different uh, methods that are within this protocol so the first one should begin editing. And basically what this does is when the user taps our text field we have to decide if we want to allow them to edit it or not. Um, for now we'll just put a, a console output and say allow editing. And then we'll just return true because we want to, of course, allow this to be, allow that text field to be edited. Uh, the next one, the text field did begin editing. And basically this says that we are starting to edit, or the user is starting to edit this uh, text field. Uh, again, we'll just put a console output on here just to see what's kind of going on. And with this one, we actually don't have to return anything because it's not asking us. It's just telling us that the user did begin editing that uh, particular text field. Uh, we'll go to text field did end editing. And basically, it's just like this one, except for it is a message that says we have stopped editing. So again, we'll just say print line and say editing is done. And then the next one, so text field, is we should say should return. And this basically um, is when the user 
and presses the enter key or the next key, whatever the keyboard actually has on it. And we can just say, uh, let's say enter was pressed. And we'll return true. next one so there's actually a lot of these but the names kind of tell you what they do so should change characters and range this one's actually pretty cool and what this one will actually do is a little bit different it it's a way to kind of monitor what the users are entering um, so if you wanted to limit the characters they enter or limit it to only allowing them to enter numbers or only allow strings to be entered this is normally where I would do that. Um, we're, we're, we're gonna set up code to uh, limit the amount of characters uh, the user can enter to 10. So to do this we set up a variable, call it length, and we're gonna set it equal to the count which is just going to be the number of characters in the text field. So text field and dot text plus the string is actually right here is actually the next character. So this is called every time they try to change uh, a different uh, input. So we want to add what they're going to add to it. So we'll also say count again. And this time it'll be a string. And so we want to make we want to check the length. So we say if the length is greater than 10 characters, we're going to return false because we don't want them to go over 10. And if the length is under 10, then we're going to return true and allow them to edit the text field. And so that basically goes over, well, there's one more. Let's look at that. The last one is text field should clear. And this way you allow, we'll say return true. You use this if you want to allow the text field to clear or not. Um, I didn't set that property in the text field, but if we go back, here's our clear button. If we say is always visible. And we'll change this to say that they hit the clear button. We should get this message. Oh, forgot to say return true. Okay, so our app should be ready to run. Let's see. Okay, so our app is now running. Wait for this. So when we hit, uh, when we click on this, we'll see some of our. Well, let's pull up the console, actually. I rearrange this. Okay, so here's our console window, and we'll see our messages. That we so when we first click it we see that we're allowing editing and the user has begun editing. So our keyboard comes up and we start editing. We can enter a bunch of characters, but if we will not be allowed to go over 10. And if we hit this X, we'll actually clear it. We should get another message. And if we hit return, we know that enter was pressed. 
Um, and you'll notice that we didn't get editing as done because we cannot actually leave this text field because of the way we uh, set up the application. But we can go back and change that. And when they hit the return button, what we'll do is dismiss the keyboard. So we'll say uh, text field dot resign first responder. Now if we rerun this, we should be able to dismiss the keyboard and get another uh, console output. So we'll just say hello. We hit enter, keyboard is gone, and as you can see, we got the message that enter was pressed and editing is done. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Um, be sure to leave any comments with any questions, and be sure to visit my website for more in-depth information.